Hey, what's going on everybody? Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I'm really excited to knock out today's content because we're going to be talking about some music theory lessons and we're going to be talking about a concept under the music theory umbrella that I'm very passionate about and is probably my favorite topic as it pertains to guitar theory and music theory, and that is modes. We're gonna be talking about what modes are, like book definitions of what modes are, and then we're gonna be talking about how I use them in my own original music, how I teach them, either in Skype lessons or in the form of a YouTube video, and just all in all, how I mentally approach using modes and how I kind of make sense of them. And I would just want to just talk about all of that and share it with you all today, okay? Speaking of my own original music, tomorrow I've got a three song EP coming out by the name of Fraud. It's three songs and I'm changing up my sound a little bit. Rage, power. You metalheads are certainly going to be a bit puzzled by this new sound that I'm kind of working out here, but everybody else I think will sincerely love it and it's super cool and I'm super proud of it and I can't wait to share it with you all, okay? So the pre-save link is down below in the description as well as a pinned comment and if you guys would be so supportive and support me on any sort of streaming service platform, it'd mean a lot to me, okay? So let's dive on in into today's topic that is modes. So what is a mode? Well, a mode is a scale but it is not a key, there's a difference here. There's only two types of keys, major and minor keys, right? So a mode is a scale inside of a major or a minor key. So let's just take plain old C major. C major is the most easiest, the most easiest? It is the easiest comprehensible scale in music theory. No sharps, no flats, all natural letters, all natural notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C, okay? Well, if we were playing in the key of C major, but we choose to play and emphasize any other note other than C, the root note, well then we're by definition playing in a mode. So if I was to play the note F, and I was really emphasizing the note F under the C major umbrella, I would really be playing in F Lydian. I'm gonna show you how I got there. So the modes have a bunch of fancy names that go in order. I'll put a chart up here on the screen, okay? They are as follows. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian, or Locrian, depending on how you say it. I say Locrian, because it sounds gnarly, it sounds more abrasive, and Locrian's a pretty abrasive, haunting, gnarly, gross mode in of itself. Anyway, seven modes, and they go in order. Just like we count one through seven in order, or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, in order, the modes are exactly that, in order, they're fixed. They are never interchangeable. That order is always the same, okay? Ionian is one, Dorian is two, Phrygian is three, etc. So going back to my hypothetical here, if I'm playing in F under C major, I'm really playing in F Lydian because I'm playing the note F, I'm hammering home that note, I'm letting the audience know, that's the note I wanna play, that's the note I want you guys to gravitate towards and latch onto as an audience member, and Lydian is the fourth mode. So put two and two together, I'm playing the note F, but I haven't changed any of the notes in C major. So an F scale that I'm playing right here would be F, G, A, B, C, D, E, and F with the octave. And therefore I'm playing in Lydian because I'm playing the fourth note of C major. Put two and two together, F Lydian is the fourth mode. Therefore I'm playing in F Lydian although I really haven't changed the key. I'm still playing in C major. So I have my handy dandy guitar right here. This is a Badlands guitar. It is tuned down to drop C sharp. This is the tuning that I would say I play in or create in or write in, I don't know, maybe 60, 65% of the time. More often than not, I'm in drop C sharp. It's like my favorite tuning. And my favorite mode is Phrygian. So a C sharp Phrygian scale, for example, is as follows. <laughs> That's a C-sharp Phrygian scale. Let's back it up a little bit. A C-sharp major scale is as follows. Root note, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So if you guys saw my music theory for beginners video, you will understand that concept. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, right? Well, taking a look at that chart there, notice the spelling or the um, alterations of a Phrygian mode are flat two, flat three, flat six, and flat seven, right? 
Well, what flat two, flat three, and flat six, and flat seven are we talking about? Well, you take your major scale, you flatten the two, the three, the six, and the seven, and then the Phrygian scale manifests itself automatically. So I just played the C major scale, the C sharp major scale. Now I alter it, flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, and the octave. That, everybody, is C-sharp Phrygian. I love that scale so much because, especially the starting point, like the open one and three area. I think it just sounds super gnarly, especially open one. Who doesn't love that, right? But also, too, it's rather musical. It's kind of just like a minor scale with a flat, too, because the rest is pretty much exactly the same, so... So, I love that sound. C-sharp Phrygian, that's probably my favorite key, or favorite mode, in my favorite tuning, okay? So, this is where I really wanna connect the dots here and explain to you guys what's really going on with modes. Going back to what I said in the beginning of this video, if we're playing in some major scale or some minor scale, but I always think in major. Major is just easier for me, it's the one, it's the first one. My brain always gravitates towards major. So if we're playing in some sort of major scale, but we're emphasizing a different note in that scale other than the root note, hence a mode, okay. So if, we're, if I'm emphasizing C sharp, because nah, I'm always hammering home this to the audience. So if I'm playing in C sharp Phrygian, therefore I'm playing in some major key, some major scale where C sharp is in fact the third note in that scale because Phrygian is the third mode. I'll say that again. I'm playing in some major scale where C sharp is the third note because I'm playing in C sharp Phrygian and Phrygian is the third mode. So mentally or with a pen and paper, write it out, I have to go back two steps in some major scale which is why I always tell you guys, if you wanna know this stuff, you have to study it. You have to know what major scale has C sharp as the third note to understand where you really are, okay? So I gotta go back a whole step from C sharp, which is B, and then I gotta go back another whole step, which is A. So C sharp Phrygian is technically in the key of A major, and the notes of A major are A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, and G sharp. I just have that memorized because I put the time and the effort in. Um, in order for you guys to understand this, you're really going to have to study and really have to like hit the books. This stuff is not easy to just like watch a YouTube video and gravitate towards too, okay? So I'm highly recommending you guys take notes in this video, study this video, etc. Make sure that if you really want to obtain this knowledge and retain it, you have to constantly, constantly study every single day for years technically. So since this is like my favorite riff skeleton like my guideline of like writing cool riffs okay so how do i use modes if i want to just like write another part whether it's like a pre-chorus or a chorus i'll use a chorus for this video for an example so like if i'm riffing in c sharp phrygian i'm hitting my open ones and threes and fives because i love that sound so much well what's a good place to go for like a chorus for example well in my opinion a great place to go would be the relative major, AKA the real deal root note that we're playing in, which again, remember is A if C sharp Phrygian is the scale or the mode that I'm playing in, all right? So I'm gonna go right to A, which in this instance is the eighth fret in C sharp, drop C sharp, okay? So check this out, I'm gonna make this up on the spot. Here goes my riff into the chorus. <laughs> Etc. So if you notice, 
it sounded like a song. It sounded like a nice little progression. I did like the Willie Adler special. I did the walk down after my main riff and then landed on the eighth fret, which was a nice like blossoming spot in my opinion of like this song sounds like we're in a new position. It sounds like we're in the chorus section of this song because I wrote it as such. I intended to go there specifically because I know the A sound in reference to C-sharp Phrygian would be a great spot to go to. It sounds like we're at the chorus section of the song because we are. Well, we are because I wrote it, but also too, I just know that would be a great landing point. You understand what I'm saying? Let's say you're a shredder or a lead player or somebody like myself that's more rhythm but can whip out a solo if I really need to with a lot of practice. Um, that's like not my natural forte. I'm really good at writing riffs naturally, I think. So what I would do if I wanted some sort of contextual spot of where I could write a lead or something is I would find the A major scale in C sharp and drop C sharp. So A major in drop C sharp is as follows. <laughs> That is where you could, I don't know, do a little lead. I'm not necessarily focused on that. Like I like leads and ambience anymore in my original music, um, like for like soundscape stuff and like, you know, ambience and textures and stuff like that. So it'll come back. My second album had a lot of solos and stuff like that, but I really enjoy Chronic Pain more because of the riffs and stuff like that. And the EP that I just put out, Apparition Superstition, and this new EP that I'm putting out, Fraud, very, very much riff, uh, you know, riff based, riff fronted music. And I like that stuff way better. It's way more creative and way more fun, for lack of a better description. Anyway, enough talking about what I like to do. As it pertains to you guys learning this stuff, what I would recommend is pick a mode that you enjoy for this hypothetical C sharp Phrygian, find the relative major on the fretboard. Go to that spot when you want a new shift in tone, a new shift in like the song is going somewhere else. And then if you really want to have like another reference point, if you're a lead player or something like that, you can find the relative major, the A major, for example, A major scale. And then that can just be another thing that you can grab thing, meaning tool, you know, a scale that you can grab if you need some sort of extra, I don't know inspiration, somewhere else to go, something to do, etc. Etc. Just a cool little, I don't know, that was a cool little... And all I'm doing is I'm just messing around in the box of A major, because again, A major is here. So I'm just going. And up to speed with some cool guy pinch harmonics. I think that's a cool little thing you could do. So all in all, everybody, that's how I use modes. That's how I create with modes. That's my mode lesson for today. This stuff is challenging. It is not easy. I'm not gonna pretend like, oh, learn it in five minutes. That's a bunch of crap. People go to university, like I said in other videos. They go to college and universities and get their masters in this stuff, man. This stuff is challenging. It's a different language. How long did it take you to speak your native tongue? It didn't take you five minutes. It took you years, right? So I'm saying that to just be give you guys a realistic expectation and to like, I don't know, not set you guys up for failure, anticipating that this is going to be a quick, easy thing. However, this is a finite amount of information. There's only 12 notes and your guitar has six strings or 22 frets and or 24 frets. So like there is a finite amount of understanding all this stuff, but it's up to you to put the time and the effort in it. Okay. So I'm really passionate about making these videos. I will do my very, very best to answer any sort of comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Feel free to ask away, and I will do my very best to give you guys the time of day and help you guys out along the way, okay? With that being said, everybody, please like and share this video if you found it educational and informational. Again, be sure to check out some of the new stuff I got coming up. I got a new sound that I'm really, really stoked on, and it'll be out uh, tomorrow, September 3rd, 2024. All right, everybody, thank you guys so much for watching. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon.